we want to find the area of the region which is inside the polar curve given by r equals seven cosine theta and outside the curve given by r equals five minus three cosine theta. Notice when theta is zero radians, here r is seven, which means this equation gives us the blue curve and when theta is zero, we'd be at this point. And for this curve, when theta is zero, we'd have r equals five minus three or two, which means when theta is zero radians, we'd be at this point on the red curve. So our goal is to find the area inside the blue curve and outside the red curve, which would be this area here. To find this bounded area, we'll be using this formula here, where r sub two would be the outer radius and r sub one would be the inner radius. But to find the limits of integration, we'll have to determine the angles where these two curves are equal to each other, which would occur at this point and this point. However, because the area is symmetrical across the x or polar axis, we can actually use zero radians as our lower limit of integration, which would be here, and then stop integrating here, and then as long as we find this area and double it, we can find the total area. So we can almost tell from the graph, this angle looks like it will be 60 degrees, or pi over three radians, but to be sure of this, we'll set these two equations equal to each other and solve for theta. Notice how they're both solve for r, which means the curves would intersect when seven cosine theta is equal to five minus three cosine theta. So if we add three cosine theta to both sides, we'd have 10 cosine theta equals five, divide both sides by 10, and we have cosine theta equals one half. So if we go to the unit circle, notice how cosine theta is equal to one half at pi over three radians, which we expected, but also five pi over three radians, or negative pi over three radians. But because we're using symmetry across the x-axis to help us find the area, we'll integrate from zero to pi over three radians, and then just double the area. So the area of the bounded region would be equal to two times one half times the integral of r sub two squared, which would be seven cosine theta squared, and then minus r sub one squared, which would be the quantity five minus three cosine theta squared, integrated with respect to theta from zero to pi over three radians. Again, we're multiplying by two because we're finding half the area, and then we'll double it, we'll multiply by two to find the total area. So now we'll begin simplifying the integrand. Notice here we have two times one, which would just be one. So we have the integral from zero to pi over three. Here we'd have 49 cosine squared theta minus the quantity we'd have 25 minus 30 cosine theta. Plus nine cosine squared theta. Now we'll combine like terms. Notice here we have 49 cosine squared theta and then we'd have minus nine cosine squared theta. That would be 40 cosine squared theta and then we have plus 30 cosine theta and then we have minus 25. Now we'll perform a substitution for a cosine squared theta. The formula is not given here, but it's on this slide here. Cosine squared x is equal to one half times the quantity one plus cosine two x. So we would have 40 times one half times the quantity one plus cosine two theta and then we still have plus 30 cosine theta minus 25. So continue simplifying. 
notice here we have 40 times 1 half, that's 20. 20 times 1 is 20, but then we have minus 25, so we have negative 5 and then plus 20 cosine 2 theta plus 30 cosine theta. Let's continue on the next slide. Now let's go ahead and find the anhydrous derivative, but notice how when we integrate cosine two theta, we'll have to perform u substitution, where u equals two theta, and therefore differential u equals two d theta, dividing both sides by two, one half differential u equals d theta. So we'll have an extra factor of one half when integrating cosine two theta. So we'd have the antiderivative of negative five with respect to theta would be negative five theta plus twenty times the antiderivative of cosine two theta, which would be one half times sine two theta plus thirty times the antiderivative of cosine theta, which is sine theta. So now when theta is pi over three, we'd have negative five times pi over three plus this would be ten times sine of two times pi over three, which would be two pi over three, plus thirty times sine pi over three. And then when theta is zero, we would have zero plus ten sine zero, plus thirty sine zero. Since sine zero is zero, everything here is just zero. So we have negative five pi over three plus ten times sine two pi over three. So going back to our unit circle, sine two pi over three is equal to the y coordinate of square root three divided by two. And then we have plus thirty times sine pi over three, which would be, again, square root three divided by two. And now let's go to the calculator and get our decimal approximation. We have negative five pi divided by three plus ten times square root three divided by two plus thirty times square root three divided by two. So the approximate value is twenty nine point four zero five zero. Which would be the approximate area of the bounded region shaded here in blue. I hope you found this helpful.